Hey, what's up guys? And welcome to this week's first jailbreak update. Now today we have some awesome news to talk about and really I just wanna clarify a couple of important notes. If you guys wanna stay updated on the latest jailbreaking news, definitely check out our Best Tech Info website. If you appreciate these weekly updates, definitely give this video a huge thumbs up and of course subscribe to stay updated as well. All right, well like I said, I wanted to start today's video off clarifying some major misinformation and giving you guys some clarity over some confusion that happened this last weekend. Now this all started way back when, when this developer, this researcher right here, Kevin Backhouse, released his proof of concept for this vulnerability right here. And again, you guys can see there is a video and essentially what it is, is he runs a code on his laptop right here, which essentially then crashes not only his Mac on Mac OS High Sierra, but his iPhone as well as his iPad on iOS 11. Now that is pretty dang impressive. I love the MacBook in the back, just like really has no idea what to do right there. But again, this is just an awesome little bug and vulnerability he found. He even wrote a proof of concept project, which basically demonstrates this, which he just did in this video right here. And it, like he said, it crashes Mac OS High Sierra or any iOS 11 device. And yes, that does include iOS 11.4 and iOS 11.4.1. Granted, they are on the same Wi-Fi network. Like I said, this was just a proof of concept project released to do this, which he achieved in this video. This right here is not an exploit, which can be used for a jailbreak. Now, just to clarify, this vulnerability potentially could be exploited by another security researcher, but this current proof of concept project, this current proof of concept exploit could not directly be implemented into a jailbreak utility. Another security researcher would have to come around and take this vulnerability and basically re-exploit it and rework this vulnerability for it to be used for a jailbreak. So that is the major confusion. Could this vulnerability be used for a jailbreak? Yes, in theory it could. It is something to keep in the back of our minds, but again, it would still take a lot of work from another security researcher to rework said vulnerability, to re-exploit it in the correct way to be used in a jailbreak utility. Now, with this video that Kevin Backhouse released, he also released this major like write-up about this vulnerability. And yes, he does call it an exploit within this. You can see uh, at some point right here, it's on iOS 11. It was patched in iOS 12 and the latest updates in High Sierra. So yes, all versions of iOS 11 are vulnerable to this bug right here. It can be exploited, but again, in its current state, it's just a proof of concept exploit. That's about it. Nothing else pertaining to jailbreaking or anything like that. It's not a plug and play exploit. It's not worked into jailbreaking, kind of like Ian Beers were. They were a little bit easier to implement directly into a jailbreak utility. But again, even Ian Beer's exploits, once they were released, Coolstar then had to take months of time working it into his utility and getting it ready for the final user. Now we are in a rather dry spell right now because as of this current point of recording this video, there are no kernel level exploits released for iOS 11.4, iOS 11.4.1, or iOS 12, any version for that matter. So that is really what we're waiting on. We're waiting for some developer to come along and potentially rework this vulnerability to exploit it in the correct way and or just an entirely new exploit and vulnerability discovered and released to the community. But as of this current point, as of recording this video, we do not have said kernel level exploit, which again is really the first step. I guess the first step in theory could be finding the vulnerability, but really the major key part right here is taking that vulnerability and exploiting it in the correct way to be used for the intention of jailbreaking. In any case, guys, I'll keep you updated when we have more information, if someone does rework this exploit, or if we have new exploits released for iOS 12 or iOS 11.4.1. Now, that is clarifying this weekend's information that kind of blew up 
all over Twitter, but there was another major important part of this video that I wanted to discuss. As of recording this video as well, if I go to IPSW.me, iOS 12.0.1 is still being signed, and I've stressed this multiple times in previous videos. It's a very good idea to downgrade to iOS 12.0.1 before it stops being signed by Apple. Now, iOS 12.1.1 could be released any day now by Apple, and I'm honestly shocked iOS 12.0.1 is still being signed. Thus, once we have a third new version of iOS 12, I guarantee this signing window will close, and it's looking very likely if we're going to receive a jailbreak for iOS 12 anytime soon, iOS 12.0.1 is the firmware to be on. Granted, if you're on iOS 11.4.1 or iOS 11.4, I personally would just stay there and save your SHSH2 blobs for iOS 12.0.1 so you can upgrade at a later date. Now, that being said, in most cases, you will need to be jailbroken in order to use your SHSH2 blobs, but I'm hopeful that we will receive a jailbreak for iOS 11.4.1 sooner than iOS 12.0.1 or any version of iOS 12 because all versions of iOS 11 are substantially more vulnerable to being exploited and have a jailbreak be released for them, essentially. Even Pwn to Own has stated multiple times if we ever received a kernel level exploit for iOS 11.4.1, it would take a matter of days to rework that into Electra or uncover in Pwn's case and basically have a new end user utility be released for those firmwares just like that. It wouldn't take any further exploiting or backend work to release the utility. We just need a kernel level exploit that is appropriate for said firmwares. Now in comparison to iOS 12, the exploit is just the first step and getting root read and write access and being able to successfully put code onto the phone, I guess, is the second step. And that can be achieved in both iOS 12.0.1 and 12.1 if an exploit was released. But the major problem with iOS 12.1 is with the file system remount. If we are unable to do that, we're unable to get in to the code that we actually put onto the phone and have it launch on device. Now with iOS 12.0.1, it sounds like those remount issues are not going to be a huge issue. Granted, there are still a ton of steps to be done for the very first iOS 12 jailbreak in comparison to iOS 11.4.1, which has all these extra steps already completed as we have a jailbreak for iOS 11.3.1, a very stable one for that case. And uh, iOS 12.0.1, all those extra steps will be needed to be done before we receive a jailbreak for it. So even if we received a kernel level exploit for say 11.4.1 and 12.0.1 on the same day, I guarantee you a jailbreak for iOS 11.4.1 would be released to the public first before an iOS 12.0.1. Anyway, guys, I will keep you updated if we receive new kernel exploits for either of these firmwares, like I've been saying throughout this video. But if you guys are already on iOS 12, especially if you're on iOS 12.1, I'd highly suggest to downgrade to 12.0.1, or again, if you're on iOS 11, just save your SH, SH2 blobs. And again, if you're geobroken, this is easier than ever. This was an awesome way that Pwn tweeted out to do this. It's a really sweet one. Let me go into Cydia and show you guys exactly how easy this is to save your SH, SH2 blobs on device. You're going to need two packages. You're going to need TSS checker, and you're going to need M terminal installed on your device. Again, this is just for the uncovered jailbreak. I have yet to try this out on the electric jailbreak, but it sounds like it's just for uncover. But once we have both of these packages installed, all we have to do is go into M terminal right here. Um, and let me pull up my notes application right here. You just have to run this command and I will put it down below in this video's description. I'm going to copy that and then I'm going to paste it right there and click return. It asks me for my password and again, it's Alpine by default if you've yet to change it and I think I messed that up already, but let's see if this works. Nope, we're good. If you guys can briefly see it right here, 
it basically went through the process of saving your blobs for iOS 12.0.1. Now this command is just for 12.0.1. It's not for all of the currently signed iOS firmwares, but if you guys specifically want iOS 12.0.1 blobs, that is it. That's all you have to do. You two packages from Cydia and run this command right here and your blobs are saved on device. Um, if I go back to my notes, if you guys take a look at this command, it's for 12.0.1 right there, and it saves your blobs in the path var mobile media. So if you guys are curious, if I go into files right here, and I go back to var right there, and go to mobile, and then go to media, right at the bottom right there, that is my SHSH2 blob, and it's currently saved on device. I could very easily SSH via my desktop, drag that from my phone to my computer to use with future restore in the future once we have a jailbreak out for iOS 12.0.1. So again guys, that is why I'm staying on iOS 11.3.1. I'm currently jailbroken, I'm enjoying my jailbreak, and once a jailbreak is released for iOS 12.0.1 or any version of iOS 12, I will then use future restore to upgrade to it regardless if iOS 12.0.1 is being signed. For the majority of users, however, if you don't want to deal with blobs, if you don't have any idea what I'm talking about, I'd highly suggest just to get to iOS 12.0.1. While it's currently being signed by Apple, you can do this directly via iTunes. You can go to this site, ipsw.me right here, and download the official IPSW file, restore via iTunes. But again, like I said, this firmware was released on the 8th of October and iOS 12.1 was released on the 30th of October. So what we're almost to the end of November now, I can't believe iOS 12.0.1 has been signed for this long. It has been roughly three weeks now, one of the longest signing windows I've ever seen for an iOS firmware when a new version is out. So really guys, I wouldn't be surprised if today or if sometime this week, I've been saying this for the last week now pretty much that iOS 12.0.1 could stop being signed at any moment. So like I said, either get to this firmware or if you're on iOS 11.3.1, save your blobs via this method I displayed in today's video. If you're on 11.4 or 11.4.1 or iOS 12 or just not jailbroken and you want to save your blobs, I'll link a video that I did before which I showed you guys how to do this on the desktop. It's a much easier way that way as well. I just thought this way was really interesting in today's video. Anyway guys, thank you so much for watching today's video. Again, if you enjoyed it, definitely give this video a huge thumbs up. Subscribe if you want to stay updated on the latest jailbreaking news and definitely check out Best Tech Info if you guys have some time. Anyway guys, thank you so much for watching today's video, but until next time, this is Tony, signing out.